we're going to talk about periodical cicadas. We have a few different broods that are here, but this is a really big year for cicadas. So just a quick reminder of the difference between periodical cicadas and annual cicadas, because when I'm talking to people, they're like, well, we have cicadas every single year. What's, what's the big deal? So yes, annual cicadas, they come out every single year. There's a lot of different species, like over 3,000. You can see right here, this is one of our species. They are large. They usually have, they have a life cycle of two to five years, and some of them come out every single year. We usually hear them in July and August. So yeah, every year. But the periodical cicadas, these are some that come out either every 13 or 17 years, depending on the brood. There are seven different species. You can see here that they are quite a bit smaller. They have a black body. They have red eyes. Occasionally you'll have some genetic differences and you might actually see white or blue eyes, which is interesting. But that black and orange slash red coloration is, is very typical. These will be coming out in late April through early July. These are native to the Eastern North America. They are not found anywhere else in the world, so we're pretty special. Another fun thing about periodical cicadas is the males synchronize their singing. So that's why it can get so loud and you just have that hum through the time that they are out. Again, these are periodical cicadas. They are in the genus Magicicada because it's a magical experience, at least for us entomologists and hopefully everybody else. It seemed like magic when they would just come out of the ground, they would be here for four to six weeks and then they would disappear and not come back for so many years. So they got the name Magicicada. All right, another uh, thing, a lot of people will call these locusts. They are not actually locusts. Locusts are similar to grasshoppers, um, a short horned grasshopper that has a swarming phase. While cicadas do swarm or they have this swarming emergence, they are very different than what actual locusts are. So this map shows you the different broods that are out there. You can see there are 17 year broods and 13 year broods. 17 year broods are typically in the northern areas and 13 year broods are typically in the southern areas. There are a lot of different broods. So this is one of the broods that's emerging this year, brood 13. It's in northern Illinois and those states up there. And then we have brood 19, which is a much broader area. And these are the ones that we will see in Missouri. Here's a little more information about the broods. Again, this is the one that we will see in Missouri, brood 19, called the Great Southern Brood. There is a chance some of the other brood will have a few stragglers over here, but pretty much it's just brood 19. Four different species coming out in late April through the first and second week of May. Because some questions I get, mostly why are there so many? And we don't really know that yet. We think it's because it overwhelms the predators when there's so many, they're going to get eaten. Birds are able to gorge on them, squirrels, and even your dogs and cats will be eating them. And there's so many that there's still many left to be able to lay eggs. So it overwhelms that predatory inclination. Also, more studies are showing that it could also be to avoid parasitic fungi or specialist predators. Our regular cicadas, our annual cicadas, have a specialist predator, the cicada wasp, and they do not affect these because they're out at a completely different time. So there's a history of these emerging and there being so many that they will completely cover trees and you might actually have to use a snow shovel to clean up. We don't actually think that's going to happen with this one because it's only one brood in Missouri, though there may be some areas where there are that many, but that probably isn't as likely this year. Uh, also, are cicadas safe? Are they going to bite you? Are they going to sting you? No, they, they won't. And like I said, your pets probably will eat them if they're outside and they're going to be fine. You probably don't want them just eating so many of them, but they'll probably be fine and you will be fine. The thing that we do have to worry about though are young trees. So young trees that have branches that are about the size of your finger, that's where the eggs are going to be laid. And if there are a lot of cicadas that actually can affect the health of the small trees, your big, large, healthy trees are going to be fine. After the cicadas have been here, you might actually see a bunch of dead branches on the end. That's called flagging. Yes, they'll drop, but your tree is going to be fine. For those young trees, we do recommend that you cover them with a fine mesh, about a quarter inch mesh or smaller, and that'll protect them from the cicadas. Better yet, if you're thinking of planning things this year, you might want to wait until next year.
So another thing I've been asked, what pesticides should we use? Pesticides are not recommended because they're not effective. These insects are strong flyers. So even if you were to put something on your tree and kill what's there, more cicadas can come anyway. So this is not what's recommended. Again, your trees are gonna be fine unless they're young. So you want to exclude the cicadas from even being able to get there. If you do use pesticides, keep in mind that it could affect the birds that eat them or the other animals that eat them or beneficial pollinators. There's some more information. I will drop these links in the chat so that you have them, but there's a lot of information out there. You can always reach out to your local extension office. And then I do want to mention this. This site, cicadasafari.org, is a really great site for more information about them. Also, if you want to be part of helping scientists understand the range of where these emergences happen, please uh, download Cicada Safari app. It's available on Apple and Google. And this is really important because when you have cicadas or an insect that most of their life cycle is underground and they only emerge every 17 or 13 years, it's really hard to do research on them. And so this makes it for a perfect citizen science project, which allows us to be able to add data for where they're found. Scientists can't go around everywhere and try and find them, but if you find them, you can add that information. And that's also can be helpful with the different species because they are not all in equal numbers. Some of them are more rare than others. So this is a chance for you to be involved and, and help us with that. Also with the change in weather and climate, we don't know how that impacts these cicadas. So being able to add data to scientists who are studying this is going to be able to help scientists detect changes over time. And while I'm talking about citizen science projects, this is another one that we just learned about. This is the squash pollinator search. I'll drop this link into the chat, but this is a group that studies squash bees and other squash pollinators, and they're trying to learn more about them. And we just got an email about this asking for some extension master gardeners from other states to be able to participate. So if you are interested in this, I will drop that in the chat. It sounds like a really fun project. So that's it for today. I hope you're excited. Yes, it's warm weather. Be patient. We're almost there. It's going to be a lot of fun.